This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in photography, design, cooking, business, you name it. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the classes so you can take the opportunity to try new things. I, for example, am using Skillshare to learn Procreate on the iPad Pro I bought initially for Lightroom photo editing on the go. It's been a quick way to get a wider understanding about the app and to learn lots of cool shortcuts. Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only around 10 bucks a month. I am working on a review of the Fuji XF10, but not a day goes by without someone asking me to compare it to the Ricoh GR Mark III. And I can often read between the lines that what they want to know is if the Fuji is 95% of the camera at 50% of the price. But I'm sad to say no, it's 50% of the camera at 50% of the price. Let's start with the price. I bought the Fuji in a store for just above $400, while the GR3 is closer to $900. After comparing the two cameras, my conclusion is that they are both reasonably priced. As always, you get what you pay for. Size-wise, they are very close. The Ricoh is smaller from every angle, as well as lighter. But in a winter jacket, I don't feel the difference day to day. The build is the first thing that really separates them. The Ricoh is all metal with a thick stealthy coating and a rubbery grip material. The Fuji is half and half metal and plastic and feels a bit more hollow. No thick coating and the fake leather feels very thin. It feels well made for sure, but the price difference is present here. If we look at the handling, it's the same thing. All the buttons and dials are much easier to reach on the Rico, and everything feels more refined. But a big plus for the Fuji is the joystick. Very nice addition in my opinion. The grips are equally comfortable in my hands. The biggest downside to the Fuji when handling it is that I have to manually remove the lens cap, which when going one-handed is annoying. The Ricoh is a tad faster at startup. The Fuji has a touchscreen for focusing and flipping through images, but sadly you can't use it for menus or the quick menu. On the Ricoh, you can. If we look at autofocus speed in daylight, the Ricoh is a tad faster, but it's not a landslide. And please note that I'm not using the latest firmware on the Ricoh. In low light it's the same story, both do fine, but the Fuji is slower and not as accurate. Now the key element to street cameras, where even the fastest autofocus can sometimes be too slow, is zone focusing. On the XF10 you can do it just like any other Fuji, use manual focus and then turn the super fiddly focus ring to set it for example at 3 meters, which at 5.6 will give you roughly 1.5 to 165 meters. But unlike other Fujis, including the X70, it now comes with a snap mode. You can quickly toggle it with a button and it gives you either f5.6 at 5 meters or f8 at 2 meters. I actually kinda like the implementation. It's very quick and it does what it should. It's just that the Ricoh does it better. Here I can save whatever distance or aperture I want to the custom wheel, which lets me quickly change the mode, ISO, aperture, focus, shutter speed, white balance and even the entire button configuration of the camera with one simple turn. Not to mention the full press snap, which lets you engage a predetermined snap distance even in autofocus by ramming the button all the way down in one push. So again, the Fuji does an excellent job for the price. Other features that separates them is for example the ability to transfer raw files, 
image stabilization with a desktop function, USB-C charging instead of micro, and an option for wide-angle converters. The Fuji, on the other hand, can show off with remote control shooting, picture profiles including classic Chrome that unlike the Ricoh can be applied to RAW files in post, and the wonder that is a built-in flash which can sync at any speed. On the Ricoh I instead went with a small external flash. When shooting with the GR I don't miss having a flash all that much, but on the other hand, with the Fuji I use it all the time, simply because I can. If we look at the image quality side by side, they are very similar. Both are nice and sharp, I'm no pixel peeper and I don't care about such small differences, but with that said, the Fuji looks sharper in the center, but softer towards the corner. My experience from using the two cameras out and about is that they have an equal image quality. And they are even enough in low light as well. And as expected, video is pretty bad on both. So there you go, I would be happy with either as my always with me camera and would let the price decide which one to buy. In a way, I think they both help justify the other's price quite well. Please subscribe for my upcoming review of the XF10 and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.